let's just see what's going on here. So we're streaming. And I'm um, just waiting for everything to come online. Right. Not working? Working? Not working? Ah, oh, okay. So it's working here at the moment. And... Um, I'm getting offline on one and online on another one, so I think I'm online. If you can see this, please let me know <laughs> and I'll show you my screen. <laughs> this one here is saying to me, you're offline, you're offline, you're offline. So we really like to thank Restream for that. Um, I'm pretty sure that I am online now. Thank you, Gary Hayes, live on Facebook and Gary Friedman. It's working now in Melbourne. It's good to see something's working in Melbourne. That's my little bit of a cheek. So what I'm going to do today, um, sorry, that really threw me. I even forgot to put my lipstick on, which is so annoying. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm walking you through my technical setup, including the green screen, picture in a picture, screen sharing, and it's the hardware and the software the cameras and the mics and the stream deck and the black magic and the Procaster mic, I said mic, and the M audio mixer and my ring lights and Lou, uh, oh, the Lumix lights that are behind me that give it a sort of a pinky look, I guess. We're going to go through all of that and we're going to go through the software that I use to make the straps. So for instance, there's a little strap here for you, if you like. If you haven't met me before, my name is Lowell Papworth. I'm a university lecturer and have been for, oh, since the 90s, I guess. Um, I'm a Cert for trainer. My real job is as a social media expert, but I do also teach EduSocial. And EduSocial is that educational, edu marketing, educational marketing, that kind of thing. I hope the sounds okay. I didn't get a chance to check all that. This has been quite a complicated setup today. I'm just going to have a whinge for a second, then we'll go straight into it. It's complicated because it's inception, meaning I had to use my iPhone and I've actually have connected this to my vision switcher so that I can switch backwards and forwards um, rather than just using my usual setup because I need to be able to show you my usual setup. What do I mean by that? If I do this and then I switch to this, there, then I can show you what my setup is. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> but it took a little bit of thinking because not all that stuff is typical to me. Anyway, the first thing I want to do, I'm going to try to do, is give you the pre recorded walkthrough so that you can see how the room's set up. Here we go. I would like to know if you can hear this. Be able to just a second, it's not playing. I'm not sure why. Now it is okay. Let me walk you through my Zoom Studio setup. I've got a printer, an on air sign. Behind the scenes are Lumix lights, which give a very colourful background. If I'm using the camera without the pull-up green screen, the green screen is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be upright in a corner, but hey-ho. 
that's in case I ever feel like cleaning, never happens. That's a store in case I feel like doing store work. And an armchair in case I feel like doing a more casual background. I actually have fairy lights back there. So that's called a beauty spot. This is the working arrangement. Let me just hold some of this. And this mic is a Rode Procaster with a pop shield that I can swivel in and out of the way. It'll be obvious why later. Just quickly with the setup here, I put all my cables on a tie rack that can come out. It's supposed to keep me organized. It doesn't, but whatever. And then these are soft clothes that I can set up and use when I need. It's just Ikea, Ikea wardrobe. I like little crystal thingies though. My wardrobe is very specific. Um, I had a lot of things this color, but the green screen was mixing it up with the green screen. So we had to go with blues and purples and pinks and greys and browns and keep away from, I guess, everything else. I don't know. <laughs> I try to mix up my tops a little bit just because people get fed up with me wearing the same thing, but hey ho, don't have an unlimited budget these drawers this is glass so i can see what's in here but i'm so scared of scratching it i've put stuff on top and then uh, microphones and tripods and gopros and all kinds of rubbish in there this cupboard has um the large tripods and some handbags and then my training teaching stuff up there so let's come to the desk sorry if i'm swiveling around too fast we'll get the mic push that out of the way the microphone plugs into the M Audio. The M Audio plugs into the Black Magic, and I can put multiple mics on here. My ZV1 camera, just sit down, plugs into the Black Magic. And I also set up my green screens in here, but I could do it in OBS or I could do it in Zoom. There's me. So I've got a monitoring. This is um, the iPad with the notes from last week. And I like it because I can also draw things like a whiteboard to the students and then they just see the whiteboard here. That's what goes out. So that's the preview, that's the live program. My iPhone's making me look washed out, it doesn't look like that. I have here sound monitoring, I have here the green screen, what green screen I've chosen, so I remember that I've got the correct one. In this case, it's EduSocial, so it is correct. What else do I have? Oh, um, although I change cameras here, I put all the straps, like the news feed strap, uh, here. Uh, so I press here and then it comes up. I don't know, Laurel Patworth News, Laurel Patworth EduSocial, Warning, Be Right Back. Um, and then I set up my picture in a picture here. So this is screen share where my camera with my talking head is in the bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right. And that gives me the the whole screen and then I'm in the bottom. I'll show you that in a moment and I'll show you how to set that up. I have here just my head so people can see me with or without the green screen. And I have just the screen if I wanna get out of the way. And there I have the chat so people can chat with me. I have a countdown. I have a image inviting people to do courses with me. Twitter, mute, go live, record. And if I click go live, record comes up as well because I've attached them to do both. Because I always forget to record what I'm doing live. Uh, I want to get back to you guys live. And I'm just trying to think what else I need to show you. I love the M1 because it's not noisy. That reminds me, turn your heaters off. 
and your fan off. I've done way, way too many videos. Way too many videos. I forgot to turn them off. Oh, up here, I have a ring light and loom cube and another loom cube. This one's for hair light. This one's to remove variations in color off the green screen. And I've got the curtains closed today because the sun is being weird. Did I say I've got a sunny ZV one? I think I did. What else do I have here? I've got drives and drives and more drives. And I'll show you the software setup. And I'll show you, what else do I need to show you? I'll show you OBS. I'll show you the restreaming software. I'll show you the Stream Deck software, the Blackmagic software. And that includes the sound software. And um, I'm just trying to think what else there is. Oh, the, uh, the reason I like the Sony ZV-1 is because it does shallow depth of field. And I'll show you shallow depth of field as well. All right, that's been six minutes. I think that's enough of the actual layout of the room. Let's get to setting some of this stuff up. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Thanks. Hope you found that useful. It was just a really quick walkthrough. <laughs> um, I need, and I needed you to see it so that you know when I do certain things, what uh, I've got the camera here, but you'll be able to visualize where it is on my desk or in the room and then understand what's happening. Now, um, what are we going to do first? Good question, Lol. I think we're going to pull the green screen up first. So you saw it laying on the floor. I've now moved it pretty well into position. Let me show you what happens. I pull the green screen up like this. It's a um, roller blind on the floor, I guess. I have to always keep an eye on this corner because you can peek around the corner or I just zoom in just a touch with my camera <laughs> and that sorts it out. So uh, why do I do the green screen? I do the green screen so that I, I put an image behind me. It's not green at the moment. It is blue and if I turn the blue off, um, OBS just shows it as black, but I could also put a blackboard on or I can put on, I've got pastel pink and mint green and different things for when I'm doing a talking head, which reminds me I need to be over here. <laughs> so you want to make sure if you've got your text that you're slightly on the side. And that also helps you if you want to uh, put a picture in a picture next to you, if, if you're dead in the middle doesn't really help. Don't worry about that. We won't do that today. So what I do want to do today is show you what the green, what happens with the green screen when I go into the bottom left hand corner. Oops. And the top right. And bottom left, top left. Let me, um, yeah, okay, so that's good. Now, I like to do picture in a picture and I like I like to vanish so that the screen is there behind me. Let me just change that monitor to the other monitor. I'm going to show you how to do this in a moment. I'll just change the display to this one. And so it becomes, um, I'm almost gone from the screen. And what I'll actually do occasionally is pick this up this one up and I'll move me across I like to be up and in just slightly and then everything vanishes in the background one of the reasons I have pink on the back is I don't like the black backgrounds <laughs> so <laughs> there is that if I um, am showing something I've switched this monitor to 720 um, what is it called uh, la, 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 la. 1280 by 720 and the reason I do that is I want this to be nice and clear in fact I'm going to up this slightly 
the minute there's too much white space, I know that people are not going to be able to sit on their mobile clear enough and that's going to be an issue. So, you know, as I, um, when I'm showing things, I want this to be as large and as clear as possible. I, I doesn't matter if I'm a bit too large or too small, my little picture in a picture, but I definitely do not want stuff to be missed. If I'm clicking on menus or showing people things, then they need to be able to see it clearly. Of course, if they're watching it on their iPhone, they can't see it very well. That's up to them. Um, there we go, a little bit of inception. So the, where are we? We're at, we've done, oh, now I want to show you OBS. And the best way for me to do that is actually go, that mouse is mucking up again. I'm going to change my properties to display number zero. And I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with this thing up here. It's problematic, I understand. But I do think that it's Im it's important that you focus on the bits down here. In fact, what we'll do is we'll make, can we make this bigger? No, can't. All it does is it moves the scenes around. Okay. It's kind of annoying. Um, right. First of all. Maybe what I can do is put the scenes over here. This is what I mean, like I couldn't really test all this stuff before we started and that's a little bit frustrating for me. But I didn't, you know, you, you go live and you want to show people things so it's, that's how things change. Um, so I just, let me get that in there and then I want to bring up, okay. So the first thing I do is I add sources. There's a little tab down at the bottom, right at the very bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Sources and scenes. Sources are your camera. So when you're doing a talking head, it's this, okay? It's any second camera that you have, something like this. It's also plugged in. That's another source. It can be images or slides. It can be your monitor because you want to screen share your monitor. That's another source. And so for me, in my sources, if we go back to here, right, yep, yeah, down here you'll see I've got a source called the Blackmagic camera. So whatever camera I'm running, I'm, I run it through the Blackmagic and I switch cameras on the Blackmagic. So it's just one camera called Blackmagic. I also have monitor for screen share and then I have blue for a blue background if I want to have a blue background. If I go to scenes, scenes are grouping the sources together. So I need to have a camera plus blue, black magic camera plus blue, in order to have a blue background or black magic camera plus edu social blackboard image. So how you group things together are important. If I do this, I've got two sources. I've got my monitor and I've got my talking head, my black magic camera and my monitor screen share. So they're called scenes because you're putting two things or more together. As an example, if I click on head, you'll see head. You're not seeing it because I'm not showing the screen. If I click the second one down called pip, that's just straight up picture in a picture. Screen is screen, nothing else. I can play the countdown, which you can't see. Um, what This is the chat one and then if you're seeing the list here there was the screen play countdown media chat and so on and so forth so your sources are each individual thing and you make a long list of them and then you grab them and drag them and make scenes out of them and then I drag them around the page so I can pick it up from here and move me around and you know it depends on your layout and what you want. Do you want side by side or do you want something different? All right. 
So I like OBS for this. Other things that I can add in on OBS are my straps, which are the um, the things down the bottom that I put on. These sort of transition-y titles, if you like. And with the new version of OBS, you can cre create them on the fly or create them quickly. So you can type up, for instance, the URL that you're showing in your live stream. Now, if you don't want to use OBS for live, what you can do down here, just look at the bottom right hand corner. Don't worry about the inception thing that's happening at the top. At the bottom right hand corner, I could stop streaming, but then that would be the end of it. <laughs> but I could just do recording so I can use this as my recording software. If I click start virtual camera, all these things like the straps are now available to Zoom because I open up Zoom and I choose OBS virtual camera as the camera. And then everything that I do in OBS comes through on Zoom. And I like the fact that I have a backup recording here. Zoom can record it. Yes, this is being recorded on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and wherever else. But if one of those fails, I've also got the OBS recording so I can upload it again later on. Oh, the only other thing I want to show you as part of this, because it's not an OBS course, OBS has lots of videos themselves, but if you click on stream, I can put in restream, which is the restreaming service I'm using today. That means I go out on I can go out on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. What's the other one? YouTube. <laughs> and I put in the stream key. So I, I sign up for Restream and then they give me a secret key, which I'm not going to show you. <laughs> I put it in there. And then when I click Start Streaming, it automatically connects to my Restream service and then sends it out to whatever I've set up on Restream. So let's have a quick look at Restream. Then I'm going to come back to OBS because I want to show you how I use buttons uh, to control everything that I do. So I need to change my, my monitor. Let me just go back to here. Properties. And I want to do monitor one. OK, there we go. So this is that second monitor. I showed you in the video earlier the different monitors. This is the second monitor. Um, with Restream, you go in, you click Update Titles. I'm not going to do it because I'm live and I'm so scared that another thing's going to break. I don't do it while I'm live. I do it on the fly. I do it before. <laughs> but the ti I write the title of what I want my video to be and then I write a description which is pretty well everything. Um, I have two formats. I have social media news on Monday and then I have lecture on Thursday. That's why it says lecture, a walkthrough of my online course creation studio. And then I've said I wanted to go out on YouTube. Periscope is Twitter. Facebook business page, Facebook personal, LinkedIn personal profile, I could have chosen a page, and my community crew group. So I'm just sending out to all of them. Who knows, maybe somebody will be interested in those. These numbers I found are not legit. Like it says one person's watching, but then when I look, I see that there's 10 comments from 10 people on that destination. I'm like, so I think it's not in real time. I'm not sure. I don't know. Don't ask me. So this is Restream. I set up Restream. I add my channels, YouTube, Periscope slash Twitter, etc. And I just have to say approve, 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 approve. You know what verification's like. And then I update my titles before I go live. Somewhere in here, I think it's in settings, is that secret code that I had to put in OBS. And then we're good to go. Restream is not free, 
but I believe they have a free plan. You'd have to go look it up. I decided to pay for it because I wanted three or four Facebook things and sometimes I do other sites as well and then I have clients doing things. Now, there are alternative... Oh, I left that on. There are alternatives to Restream. I have a lifetime license for one stream and I have a lifetime license for switchboard. But the last time I looked, neither of those had chat. So let me explain how chat works to you. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure how I got reversed. I think it was when I was... Let me just transform this and flip horizontal. That's better. So OBS lets me flip my monitor, my um, image backwards and forwards. So I think I'd accidentally switched it the wrong way and I had to switch it the other way. Where are we? Okay. So Restream is an app that you download and I have it. Let me drag it over to the other window so that you can see it. So this is the actual app called Restream App. This is what I see when you guys are chatting with me. But if I want to share the chat to the group, to the tutorial group, to the lecture group, whatever, um, I switch it this way. Gary, good question. I can't remember why I'm using 30 FPS. I think it's because one of my devices doesn't allow me to do 25. So I needed uniform or I preferred uniform rather than flipping backwards and forwards between the different frames per second or whatever FPS it is that stands for. Um, so in a, at the end of a lecture, I can flick to this because a lecture tends to be broadcasty like I am now. <laughs> and then the questions come in at the end. But if it's a tutorial, then I can have this up most of the time and show people and chat with people, whatever else it is that I'm doing. Okay. Amazing tech now. This would be hundreds of people in the old broadcasting world. I do want to say that if I had hundreds of people... I'm pretty sure the quality of what I do would be much better because then I could focus on the content, not on being a vision switcher and an audio person and a lighting person and a green screen person and all the other things. But um, if you take nothing away from anything else today except this one thing, let me switch to the other one actually. Mm -mm, on. Let me switch to the other one. That's better. Practice. Go live. Go live before anybody knows who you are. I mean, it's unfortunate for me that I do have thousands, thousands of followers because when I make mistakes, it's super public. And I have to, even though it grips my stomach and I'm so upset with myself like this morning like that I can't believe that mouse died the minute I went live it had been behaving itself perfectly fine I go live and then it dies and it's heartbreaking because you've spent hours setting things up and testing things well I have anyway <laughs> so um oh yeah by the way in the background I've got my <laughs> my camera <laughs> So we can really do Inception. Um, and I practice and practice and I try something new every time. Every time I do an online course, every time I do a video for YouTube or Facebook, every time I do a live stream, every time I do a webinar, I try to add something new in or I try to fix a mistake I've made before. And I don't want to waffle because we've only got 20 minutes left, but, you know, Little things like um, I would forget to change my phone so that the display didn't go off. And it was set at five minutes. So I'd be showing something and it, the display would go off. And I'm like, oh. 
So now I've made it never. Of course, then I forget to turn it back to five minutes when I'm no longer recording and the battery goes flat in five seconds flat. <laughs> but at least, you know, I don't know. It For me, it's like... Um, I just, I'm so thankful about how much I've learned. And yes, I agree, it would have taken hundreds of people to do this in the past. But I think it's kind of awesome that that I'm learning this stuff as well. So that's good. I'm happy with that. All right, so what do we got here? We've got our little, re our little chat window. Fouling forward for the win. Yes. Otherwise known as crying and running to Gary Hayes and asking him, what did what went wrong? My sound was terrible or my, I was out of focus or I didn't get depth of field or uh, my green screen didn't work. And um, he tries to explain it to me and eventually it sinks in. All right, enough of that. Let's keep going. So with, um, let's move that over there and let's move this over there. So what I do with OBS is I have um, sources, which are the cameras and the images and pre-recorded videos and PowerPoint presentations and anything else that I need. That all goes into sources and then I plug them into scenes so that when I go to head and then look at sources, you'll see there's a whole lot of different sources. Oh, no, you can't see that. <gasps> Of course you can't. Let me do another one then. Let me go to... Mm. i got to go to scenes. Let me go to... There's a side-by-side -side one. <laughs> you can't see the scenes because they've managed to block themselves together. But you'll understand what I mean. When you are setting everything up, create a scene and call it talking head like this one and then add sources add your talking head camera and then oh yeah I want to show you filters I need to show you filters so that you can see here we go all right so when we're here and then we go to sources and then we go to black magic camera in Properties, are you seeing that? Yes, you are. Good. Um, in sorry, in filters, I can add a chroma key filter, and that's this one here. I'm hoping you can see that. Yep, good. And I can change the green screen and make it smoother or lighter or darker and fix spill reduction and opacity and contrast so if you do a green screen and you feel like it's not good quality or your hair is looking too green actually mine is you can go in and play with that filter so you click on the camera in sources and then you add a filter called chroma key that's another word for green screen and you're good to go. Um, not sure what else I can show you in this section. So we've done. Oh, I wanted to show you Stream Deck. Yes, of course. I'm so silly. Let me bring up Configure Stream Deck. And then let me show you what it looks like. So. So this is my Stream Deck. And what I've done is I've connected all of these and I talked about them in the video at the beginning. So if you only just come in, you need to go and have a look at the beginning of the video because I say what they all are. But these are mostly OBS. So I've connected OBS to a physical Stream Deck so I can click buttons and go to different things. Sorry, I've got to go back to that. I can click buttons and show different things. So I, I, this is one of the areas that's inception. I can't actually click the button, show you different things, and also have the camera coming out. 
So I think it's going to be better if I show you how the setup is done. Um, do I want to be there? Yeah, that'll be fine. So I have a couple of stream decks and they show up here. I've only got one connected at the moment and it's the extra large stream deck, but I could get away with the smaller stream deck. I don't need the large one. And then I set up a number. Whoa, I'm, that looks like that quit unexpectedly. Let me just make sure this is okay. I can create a number of profiles so I've got one called sounds that I can go backwards and forwards and I can actually set up a, a button here called sounds, tap it and then all of this changes to laugh tracks or sobbing or screaming or giggling or warning sirens or coming soon or BBC World News sounds, audios. I don't know. What sort of audios do you want? <laughs> um, I've got another profile. I think that one I use for Zoom. And so I have special things for Zoom. Let's go in a little bit. I just need to make this a bit bigger because I can't see what you guys can see. There we go. Yeah, that's good. So over here, uh, the main thing that I'm using the Stream Deck for is something called is OBS something called OBS Studio. <laughs> I've just shown you OBS Studio, and I drag a scene. Remember, we talked about scenes and sources. I click and drag a scene onto here, and I call it walkthrough or something. I use the uh, the collection, and then I choose from the scenes which what I want that button to do. So I can say I want it to play the countdown, right? That would mean that when I click this button, it would play the ca countdown. I've already got one there. And then if I click it again, it stops the countdown. Or in OBS, I can set it up to only run for a certain number of seconds or whatever it is you want it to do. It just, all this is, and all that this is, is a, um, I'm not getting that in focus, there we go. This is simply a macro for OBS, mostly for OBS. I've got Twitter and some other things on here as well. And I like it because it means I don't have to switch between windows when maybe I'm screen sharing uh, I've got it here physically on my desk I can stop streaming quickly I can switch to the chat I can do different things so if I go here oh I'm sorry it's on this one so I again I can't I literally can't show you because the black magic's handling all the different cameras. And if I, um, you could do it, but it would take some thought. These things are not the easiest things in the world. Don't expect to, to get it right straight away. And yes, I spent quite a few hours setting this up, but clearly not enough. <laughs> the, I can switch bef between different profiles on my stream deck. So I can switch between the sounds profile and the um, Zoom profile and the OBS profile or whatever it is I've set up. I can set up uh, Twitter. So I can preset tweets to go out to say, hey, I'm live, come follow me or whatever. Set up YouTube, put up chat messages that people have left me on YouTube. I can show the number of viewers that are watching me live on YouTube. What can I do on Twitter? I can tweet, change name, change your display name on Twitter. Why would I do that? Uh, system. Oh, okay. Uh, what else do we have here? OBS, scenes. So sources are playing a video 
showing the screen. Scene is bundling them together so you have picture in a picture, things like that. You can edit and mix your audio on here. You can record and you can stream. Now I was going to show you, and I really did want to show you guys. Oh, I've got this open so it's not going to switch. Close that one. Go to here. Uh, scenes. Hit. Okay. I wanted to show you the Blackmagic software. But for some unknown reason, actually I do know the reason, it's because Blackmagic are crap. <laughs> I can't resize the, the Blackmagic software. It, it just, when I'm on 720, you can only see a third of the software. And I, there's no scroll bar, there's nothing. It's just really badly written code. Actually, I wonder if I do it on, let me see if I can show it to you on 1920. By 1080. Hmm. If I can, you won't be able to see it clearly, but that's 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 just the Artem software's crappy software fault. All right, let's see if we can do this. And we go to. No, I don't want to be bottom right. I want to be. Top left. And then I need to just transform this and fill the screen. <laughs> Whoops. Why did I flip that vertical? And then I want to transform and fit to screen. Nope, not going to do that. It's because I've changed the resolution and I'm pretty sure you still can't see down here the buttons I need to show you. Let me just see if I can resize this. No, it's still not going to fit onto the screen. Nope. Mm. All right, I can't show you the black magic stuff and I'm so sorry for that. What I will say to you is there's a switcher button down here that lets me control my cameras and it lets me um, also, let's just move that over, <clears throat> I can change my background images to whatever I want it to be in the background. I can, on my RTEM also broadcast live directly from that box instead of having to use a computer to go out live. In my palettes, I can set up my chroma keys here. Shooting through quickly. And then on the next button down, which you can't see, oh, I, I do want to point out um, the background keys and the no actually that's fine you can set up your fade to blacks and things like that but they're all the buttons on the on the machine anyway if i go to media i upload over here let me get out of the way oh no okay that's fine i think the Stream Deck didn't like me doing this live, and so it's just being problematic at the moment. Close that one, close that one, and then go. No, it's not going to work. Okay, so you can't muck around with the Stream Deck while you're streaming live, because then you end up losing control. <laughs> so if I go to the top left, and then into Scenes, and then into Sources, and then the camera there we go top left go in here find your images and drag them across to here and that way when you're in the switcher and then you're in the media player you can set which of these you want to be the green screen I don't know if that makes sense but anyway another button at the very bottom is audio and I always have a lot of problems with this. Um, 
I don't like these whizzy things. I can't use them. I have to manually type everything in. But I'm trying to keep an eye on my audio to make sure there's not too much buzz. And there it is. There's a little bit of buzz there. You can see it. There's your master. If you've got multiple camera audios and multiple mic audios all coming in, that's under the audio menu, which is at the bottom of the Black Magic. For the camera, um, if you want to do... Oh, yeah, I did want to talk about that one with you. Let me just go back to the sources and... Sometimes you look really yellow and your hair looks green or sometimes you look really washed out or the light's different because you've got the curtains open or the curtains closed. One of the nice things with the Artem, and I know I give it crap, but it's because this more expensive version has not been good to me. There's a thermal crackle. It makes a lot more noise than the other Blackmagic Artem that I have. And I do find the software bodgy. Um, but they do bring out updates every few months, so I always make sure that I get, do the firmwares. The firmwares? You know what I mean, technical term. But I do like the fact that I can play with the the lift and the gamma and the gain, and I can make things look more pink or more blue and hotter and cooler, and I can just look a little bit more rosy-cheeked <laughs> and not as washed out that the ring light gives me and things like that. So I always find... Uh, making sure I set up the camera and then check all the colors beforehand within the Artem helps. So just a reminder, let me see if I can switch across to this again. So there's the, I press that button, it says, it's a bit bleached out, but it says auto. And number four should be red, I don't know why that camera is doing that. And number green is ready to go, so it's preview. Whoa, I must have pressed the wrong thing. And, um, oh, cool. It's actually showing, this is the Artem, and then you've got the Artem software over here. <laughs> I wonder if that means that the Stream Deck is finally working. No, it's not. Okay. Um, what else do I want to show you on here? So... If I turn the Kia on, that's the other camera. And then I turn the Kia, let me see if you can see it, the Kia off, and I vanish. It's always cool. I can put a hard drive, let me come off of here. I can put a hard drive in the back here and then record all my vision so that I've got separate video and separate, it's an ISO. An ISO means it isolates. So I can have a recording of every camera separately and every microphone, including the camera microphone separately. It means I've got backups of backups. If one, one thing fails, one audio fails, then the others will all work. Um, fade to black. Ah, I've gone. <laughs> and then Let me go back to here again. If I need to mute to cough, I can click here. Kind of cool. I'm not sure what else I could go through with you today. I feel like I've not been looking at the camera a lot, but this is this is quite a sort of a a heavy duty presentation. I thought it might be a little bit beyond me, but I'm glad that I tried. If it's a bit crappy, I am sorry. Um, I wanted it to be kind of just talking about what I do and how I work. Oh, I will say that because of all the audio problems I've had, let me just switch back to this one. I found having a mixer that pulls in my Rode Procaster mic 
and then sends that to my Artem because I was having a lot of problems with the Artem sound. I found um, I found the mixer really useful, and it had to do with it being mono and stereo. And when I contacted Blackmagic, they said to me the audio coming in wasn't the right audio, which didn't make sense for, to me, but whatever. I was able to get it sorted out, and that was the main thing, I think. Um, <sighs> fell out again. Do you have any questions? Very slick. Thank you. Yeah. It's, I'm not sure how long it's taken me, what's happened to my hair, to get to where I am. I've been doing two lives a week now f since the beginning of the year. One live a week for maybe four or five months prior to that. I've been recording online courses using this kind of a setup oh, since 2008, I think. And then prior to that, I made online courses in a completely different way since 1990s and this is also useful for press because when I'm doing a broadcast um, to the press I like to um, have an image behind me that's suitable f for them to live stream so I did some morning TV interviews with ITV in the UK and things like that so I just put the picture of the opera house up behind me so that they had something to kind of they found it they liked it so I find that that sort of thing useful um, explain my pods so my these airpods and I leave one charging <laughs> and I wear one and then I swap them over because I've learnt um, were a wonderful birthday gift from the most excellent Gary P. Hayes. So thank you, Gary. And I use them for monitoring. I mean, I do have on my, uh, uh, can we get over there? I might have to turn it around that way. I do have on this monitor, audio monitoring down the bottom here. You can't see the green, the rest of it's green. I'm not sure why, oh, oh the green's green, of course. It's mapping out the green. Um, but I wasn't paying attention to it. Like I don't look down there very often and go, oh, it's a bit loud, a bit soft, a bit crackly. So by having the ear pods, air pods in, I can, in OBS, turn on advanced audio filtering, which is monitor and output. And monitor means I hear myself and I can tell if things are going dramatically wrong. <laughs> it's actually off at the moment, but I used it before and I'm not 100% sure why I've got them in now. Um, so, yes, thank you, Gary. So that's the AirPods. Oh, I do want to say, oh, I've nearly forgot one. And then we have to finish. I know I started late. We're up to the hour. But let me just um, move this across to here and then switch to, is that going to work? Mm -mm. Oh, I know. I've got to drop this down again. This is why I don't like changing it halfway through. 1280 by 720. And my tip would be don't do it. Um, so I'm at 1280 by... 720 I'm down in this area and what I've had to do and you'll have to watch a video on it but I've created a second audio this is my main audio this is me speaking this is my mic this one that goes into the black magic this one is called desktop VB cable it's a second audio and the reason why we need that is because if you want to play YouTube videos or you want to play pre-recorded videos 
from your desktop, you need VB cable to play the audio from your desktop. It's sort of confusing. I get it. I found it extremely confusing. But what I discovered was the video and the audio are seen differently by OBS, by Zoom, by all the different programs. And so you add in this thing called VB cable. It's pretty easy to add. Um, you just, for instance, if you're playing YouTube videos in Chrome, you go into Chrome and you say, audio output is VB cable once you've installed it. And then in OBS, you set up another audio source and you call it VB cable. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. All right, um, we're at 55 minutes. Were there any other questions? It doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, I don't remember why I'm using 30 FPS instead of 25 FPS. I think Blackmagic told me to. I have to check that. And yeah, okay. All right, so very quickly. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in the Ed EduSocial series. This is the second one. The first one was how to create an online course, funnels, pricing, landing pages, everything in one hour. That was last Thursdays. That's available on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, there'll be another one next Thursday at 1 p.m. Again on EduSocial, that sort of educational marketing, that sort of promoting your business using education, online courses or webinars or whatever, always is the give, always giving what students want, not necessarily just to sell stuff. You'll be another one at 1pm Sydney time next Thursday. Mondays at 10.45 I do social media news that's me practicing new tech and new t um, setups and also catching up on the news in my industry, which is social media, to see what Facebook's been up to and Twitter's been up to and all the others. So if you're interested in that, join me at 10.45 on Mondays. I ran a course on Tuesday up here in the Blue Mountains for three people privately in my small training room that only fits three people. <laughs> three to four people and that was really interesting that's the really the first live lecture like in a classroom style lecture a whole day one that I've done since COVID and I think I'm going to stay with that at the moment they were a bubble meaning they worked together in an office so they could come up here and to me that that's that that's fine at the moment. We don't have any cases of COVID at the moment in New South Wales, except for the in the international hotels. So I'm very comfortable with that. I am planning on running Sydney-based courses, two-day courses, Thursdays and Fridays, in the near future. <laughs> but with the delay in the vaccine and winter just around the corner, twice now I've set up the Sydney courses and they've fallen in a heap, um, and rightly so. Like, I don't want to take the risk. Students don't want to risk take the risk, and the government didn't want us to take the risk. So I'm a little worried. If I set up another one in the city, is it going to fall over again? So at the moment, it's three to two, one, two, three, four people up here in my training room in the Blue Mountains, and we'll give Sydney and Melbourne a miss for a while. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Nothing. Except I really liked that wardrobe slash tech cupboard that I showed you earlier. And I do think the crystal diamante handles were a bonus. And I got it from Ikea and I just thought it was really cool. Anyway, I'm putting up a blog post. I'm linking to everything that I use. I know I haven't mentioned the brand or the specs of everything that I'm using, but I'll put that in the blog post. That'll be linked to wherever you are. And, uh, oh good, yes. Um, Gary, just think about, you, this is Gary Friedman, a lot of Gary's. 
just think about setting up your sources in OBS and then creating multiple scenes and then adding those scenes to the Stream Deck. It really won't take very long at all. If what you want is a video, a structured video just on that, please let me know because today I'm aware was a big walkthrough. It was my tech, my ring lights, my mics, my green screen. It was the software, the Restream software, the Stream Deck software, the OBS software, the Restream chat software, the screen sharing software, everything. So I, I know it was a lot to take in. So if you would like a um, a bit of a tutorial, and I'll do it as a pre-record because it, it, it was quite clear today that you can't switch between certain things when you're live. So it will be a quick, short, pre-recorded video. If there's anything else you'd like to see in EduSocial around creating schools, creating online courses, creating web webinars, setting up your Zoom, setting up green screens, the software, editing, anything like that, please let me know. Oh, I just remembered someone asked me uh, for the... Um, how to do the straps. I will do a separate video on that one and do a really quick one and put it up. There's two ways I do straps. One is in OBS. Straps are the things at the bottom. This thing. Oh, I forgot that that's not working at the moment because I mucked around with Stream Deck while we were live streaming. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the strap that goes at the bottom that has my name and things like that on it, I can do that in OBS. I like to do a high quality one in Final Cut Pro. You could probably do it for free in uh, iMovie, but it's pretty easy to do. It only takes me a minute or two to do each one. And now that I figured out how to do it. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm waffling. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you on Monday for social media news or next Thursday for the lecture series. You can also check the blog for the links to everything that I'm using and any other additional videos that I've already done. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. See you. Bye. Now, shall I play the countdown? Do you guys want the countdown? You haven't said. Yeah, we'll play the countdown. There you go.